Hey everyone, these are 10 life hacks that you can use in your everyday life. Ever deal with laundry that just has a persistent odor, especially towels that maybe have sat too long on the bathroom floor or sat in the hamper for too long, or any kind of persistent odors uh, that stem from bacteria that you have a hard time getting rid of. It doesn't matter how much detergent you use, how much fabric softener you use. Well, here's a tried and true method that beats all of them. Put an equal amount of white distilled vinegar in your laundry with your laundry detergent and see if that doesn't make a difference. And if the problems still persist, then do it with every load of laundry. This is something I still do to this day. I put distilled white vinegar in with every single load of laundry along with the laundry detergent. It makes an enormous difference. And distilled white vinegar in the laundry actually also works as a natural fabric softener. So you're getting a two in one for your, for your money. And you might think, oh, distilled white vinegar, that's kind of smelly, right? After you've run your clothes through the washer and now you put them in the dryer, once that dries, you will not even smell the white vinegar. But what you will notice is any of those persistent odors you were dealing with will be gone. This next one is one that I use quite a bit in my day-to-day -day work life, and that is having to deal with uh, removing adhesives or removing anything that's of a very uh, sticky nature. It could be a uh, spill, it could be um, adhesive from some type of tape or glue or something that was put on a surface. This is the key. 90 plus percent rubbing alcohol. If you use 90 plus percent rubbing alcohol, it will break down those very sticky, very resistant substances that most cleaners are not going to remove. It works wonders, try it. But it needs to be 90% or better um, rubbing alcohol. It can't be the low percentage like 70% witch hazel. That won't do the same thing. It's gotta be 90 plus percent or better. Here's another one. Have you ever had odors that are in your refrigerator? It may not be that there's something bad in your refrigerator. It could just be that you have maybe a very strong seasoning on takeout food that you brought home that you put in the refrigerator and you open the door to the refrigerator and it kind of takes over everything. In this case, what we recommend is just put a cup of baking soda in your refrigerator and leave it in there. And what it does is it acts as a natural uh, odor absorbent for the air in your refrigerator. Along those same lines, how else baking soda is very beneficial in the home is you can use it as a carpet deodorizer. Now, you can go buy the deodorizers in the store and they're going to be, you know, a few dollars for a box of uh, carpet powder. And the primary ingredient in those carpet deodorizers is baking soda. The baking soda is a lot less expensive. It goes a lot further. You can buy three or four pounds of baking soda for just a couple bucks. And this is what I did. Put it in one of these jars that I've seen used at um, restaurants where they sprinkle like Parmesan cheese. And so what I do is I dip this jar in the baking soda, put the lid back on, and then you can sprinkle it all over the carpet. And the longer you let it sit in the carpet, the more odors it's going to absorb from your carpet pad and your carpet. It works great. Here's one that people probably are going to disagree with me on somewhat, but here goes anyway. Preheating your oven. It's a waste of time. Unless you're specifically baking, uh, if you're baking something like cookies or cakes or things like that where they have to rise, uh, then maybe preheat the oven. But otherwise, for your run-of-the-mill things like your frozen pizzas, your burritos, your potatoes, and whatever else that you might put in your oven, tater tots, french fries, things like that, you don't need to preheat the oven. Simply turn the oven on, put the item in, set your timer, and it'll turn out just fine. The preheating of the oven is a waste of time and energy uh, that you're using unnecessarily, and it will not have any effect on the outcome of the finished food. Again, the exception being if you're baking something like cookies or cakes, in that case, you do want the oven to be up to temperature first. But for most things, cooking a casserole, you're cooking a pizza, you're cooking a meatloaf, or whatever else it might be, just set the temperature for the oven, put your item in and start your timer and you'll see it'll turn out just fine and then you're not wasting that 10 minutes of preheating your oven. No energy loss and no time wasted, right? That's a good thing. Now this one may not apply to everybody because maybe not everybody eats brownies, but one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that anytime people cut brownies after they come out of the oven, even if you let them cool, if they cut them with a regular old knife out of their kitchen drawer, they tend to tear. This little simple trick will keep that from happening. Use a plastic knife. I promise you, you'll see the difference. It's amazing. 
a plastic knife will not tear the brownies. It doesn't matter if they're hot, if they're cooled, use a plastic knife, problem avoided, and the brownies will be cut very nicely and evenly. So this next one is for outside of the home. So when I go to the gas station and I put gas in my truck, so often the pump will shut off in process of pumping gas. Maybe it's only been running for a few dollars worth, three, four, five dollars worth, and it shuts off. And you restart it, and it shuts off again. This will keep that from happening. Invert the handle, turn it over the other way. I don't recommend doing this if you're planning on turning the pump on and walking away from your vehicle. If you're turning the pump on to fill your tank and you're going to walk away from the vehicle, this isn't a good idea because then the safety cutoff is not going to work. But in many cases, I usually prepay for my gas and I'm prepaying for a half a tank or so. So I know it's not going to fill up to the top and overflow. It's going to run up to $30, $40 and shut off and that's that. But when you invert the handle, it keeps it from prematurely shutting off because I've been at gas pumps before where it'll shut off several times when I'm just trying to put in $30 or $40 worth of gas. Invert the handle, problem avoided, it won't shut off. Again, don't do it if you're filling your tank and expecting it to shut off automatically and you walk away from your vehicle. That's not a good idea. Now into technology and things of that nature. I was trying to repair an electrical connection the other day and I realized I didn't have any heat shrink. Well, there's other things you can use for heat shrink. Any kind of a wrapper, like on a cigarette package, on a yogurt container, anytime where you see those wrappers that they've heat shrunk onto the container uh, for whatever, whatever product it is, those will easily serve in place of heat shrink to serve to seal a connection on a wire. You wouldn't use it on high voltage or high amperage kind of circuitry. But, you know, for low DC voltage and things like that, this works perfectly fine. And I just did it the other day because I was already in the process of repairing a cable and realized I didn't have heat shrink. And so I grabbed a cellophane wrapper off of a friend's cigarette pack and I used that to heat shrink it onto the wires and it worked perfectly. Here's one that kind of seems silly, but I've seen this happen a lot in my house and also in uh, relatives' houses and friends' houses. You're sitting with a remote control on the Lazy Boy and you have it sitting on the arm of the chair and you go to get up and the chair rocks and the remote control falls off onto the floor. So this is a little silly one I figured out some years ago. Just take the remote control, turn it over, set it on the arm. It won't go anywhere. You can get up, you can sit down, you can rock the chair. That remote control stays put. The rubber buttons act as a friction source on the surface of the arm of the recliner you're good to go, the remote control will stay put for you. All right, so the last one, kind of the coup de grace of the life hacks. This one can be used for so many different things and I've used it so many different times myself. And that is using desktop mode on your portable device, whether it's a tablet, whether it's an Android phone, whether it's an iPhone, using desktop mode allows you to do a lot of things. So one of the great ways that you can use this is to bypass those services that are trying to force you into subscribing. For instance, YouTube Premium. So YouTube Premium allows you to listen to music um, uninterrupted with no ads, and it allows you to also close the app or minimize the app so you can do other things on your tablet or on your phone, right? And if you don't have YouTube Premium, then when you go to minimize YouTube or to go do something else on your phone, it will actually stop the video that's playing on YouTube. So you can't listen to it unless you have the YouTube app up and open as the front app on your phone or on your tablet. Well, this will allow you to bypass that without paying for YouTube Premium. What you do is you go to your browser, Chrome, Firefox, whatever it is you have on your device. I use Chrome and Firefox on mine. You go to your device, you go up to those three little dots up on the right hand side and you click on them and it might look a little different on an iPhone but the principle is exactly the same. Then you go down and you select desktop mode. Then go back up to the address bar, type in YouTube and go search for what it is you want to listen to, whether it's a playlist or whether it's a single video, whatever it may be. Go ahead and select it, hit play and now what you're going to do, you'll start to hear it play. Now you're going to minimize or just hit your home button on your device so that the browser window goes down, so the browser window minimizes. Now the music will stop momentarily. Go up to your taskbar, pull that down, and you'll see there's a little player control right there in the taskbar. Hit play, and guess what? You've just bypassed YouTube Premium. Now what you're able to do is you're able to listen to your music 
without having the YouTube app up and on top of everything else. And now you can go do other things while you listen to YouTube music. And so the reason why this works is because you're fooling YouTube into thinking that you're using a desktop computer. And so if you're using a desktop or a laptop computer to do the very same thing, they allow you to listen to those things without muting them or when you go to some other application on your computer. So that's what you're doing. You're mimicking that you're on a desktop or a laptop and it allows you to bypass that restriction and listen to their music while you do other things uh, on your device. So this desktop mode can be used for so many things. I've also used it with different mobile carriers over the years in order to bypass bandwidth restrictions and also to bypass hotspot sharing restrictions that most carriers have. So most carriers, cell phone carriers, will want to charge you if you want to hotspot your phone to other devices for sharing of the internet. And so the same thing applies here. If you use desktop mode on those devices that you're wanting to share your internet to, you'll be able to use your internet from your mobile phone without have running into a tethering restriction or having to pay for a hotspot. So it's pretty cool stuff. The desktop mode is pretty powerful when you use it on your phone or tablet uh, for a lot of different purposes, but those are just two. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video all the way through. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you found something that you could use here, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Let us know in the comments below your own life hacks and things that you found that have worked in your life, and maybe we'll put them in the next video. And now for those that are longtime fans of the channel, it's the footage of the family that you're expecting.